All right? All right, but um, I do have a special uh, guest, friend of mine from Cape Town, South Africa. I have, Sheila and I have known Pastor Edson since 1980, and uh, we met him in Ohio, and um, we just became uh, fast friends. We just did, and uh, he's been uh, to, to our home and uh, many times, and we've been to South Africa a few times with him in, in his home and his family, and so he's a, he's a dear friend of mine. You know, he's probably like my long-distance friend, you know, and, uh, but it is so good to have him with us, and he's going to come and uh, minister uh, to us this morning uh, from, from a different perspective. You know, sometimes it's better to get somebody from the outside of the United States to come and, and to preach to you because he's got a different perspective of this whole thing called the church than we do. And so we need to listen to what he has to say. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, listen to what this African says. Amen. Come on up, Pastor Eddie. Let's give him a good hand as he comes. Pastor Eddie Edson from Cape Town, South Africa. God bless. You must come help me, Richard. He's on? Must I touch it again? Ah, there I'm on, there I'm on, there I'm on. Well, it's good to be here this morning, amen? My long-standing friends, uh, Pastor Rich, back home I say pastor, but I'll say pastor here this morning. And with Sheila Rich as well, long-standing friends, met way back in 1980. Heard you going to Mexico, it was way back in 1980 when Pastor Rich, we were both young men then that, those years. Uh, stirred my heart towards missions. And uh, I've never looked back. I've been involved, been in many countries, ministering and sharing. And uh, I've learned through Pastor Rich that it's more than just you, amen? There's other people that need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ as well. And I'm so blessed and thrilled to be here this morning. And um, I was in Orlando. And it's the first time I'm preaching this message today. I shared a little bit in the eight earlier, earlier service. And uh, not just because they're very special friends of mine, but I believe that God wanted me to share this word with you this morning uh, because there's work to be done. Can you say amen? And uh, we need to report for active duty at this time. If you have your Bibles with you, if you can turn with me to the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 1, I'm going to read to you from verse 1. Let me say, I'm going to talk to you this morning on restoring the thrust of evangelism and also the work of the Holy Spirit in the church. The Lord has been dealing with me and speaking to me since the beginning of this year in our local church and other places in South Africa that I preach to once again mobilize the pew, people that are in the pew, those that are not in a five-fold ministry, those are not apostles and the prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists, but to call the church again of Jesus Christ back to, to active duty. The Bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe. How many believers do we have here this morning? The Bible says, in my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, uh, they shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. If they drink any deadly thing that shall not harm them. I believe every believer must be a person that are doing these things. Laying hands on the sick. Casting out devils. Amen. Uh, speaking with new tongues and just doing the work of the ministry. I believe it's once again the Lord has been saying to me that the pew uh, needs to get involved. And once... The pew gets involved again, people, not in a fivefold ministry. We can change our nations, we can change our cities, and we can also change our communities. Can you say amen? So in Acts chapter 1, I'm going to read to you from verse 1. The Bible says here, the former, this is Luke writing here, the book of Acts. And he says, the former treaties have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 
40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but they need to wait. For the promise of the Father which he saith, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore will come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in both Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and then also the uttermost parts of the earth. You know, I've been looking at the church in this day and hour that we are living in. And most of the church world today, we have been focusing on the benefits of the cross. Which I believe it's great. And there are tremendous benefits. If you just think of, of Psalm 103, you know, forget not his benefits. He uh, forgives all thine iniquities, heals all thy diseases, crowns you with loving kindness and with tender mercy, satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like as the eagles. But I think what we have lost in this day and hour, it is the passion for the commission that was given to us after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like go into all the world and preach the gospel. Like greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. The book of Acts is looked upon by many today as the Acts of the Apostles. But it, I believe it should be looked upon as the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles and through all believers. Can you say Amen to that? Hallelujah. The reason the early church had the success they had, it is because everyone reported for active duty. And the Bible says they went everywhere preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many signs and wonders and miracles uh, followed them as they established uh, the kingdom of God. And let me say again, this wasn't done uh, by men and women that were in the fivefold. It wasn't done by the apostles or prophets or pastors or teachers or, or, or these men. It was just ordinary people, ordinary people that were in the pew that were going out there and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Most parts of the world today, even in my own country, uh, people of this world and even those of us in the church, we have become tired of all these television evangelists. All they are doing is just begging and pleading. And, and to me, many times it seems that everything that comes in the, to their coffers is just there for their own personal gain. God started speaking to me. It says, uh, said to me, it's time that you take the, the, the pew needs to take the power. Ordinary people need to get a hold of this Holy Spirit power. And they need to go out there and they need to do the work of the ministry. And the Bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Uh, they shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Uh, they shall speak with new tongues. Uh, even if they are poisoned wherever they go, God says, uh, not even that will harm them. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. So we need to understand this morning that the work of the ministry uh, can no longer be looked upon only uh, as your pastor's work. Can I get an amen there? Amen. It is the work of everybody. We all have to report for active duty. Those in the pew, young and old, we need to get involved. The work uh, is not just for a few. In most churches I've been pastoring now for close to 40 years. And if you're in a local church, it seems like, uh, you know, the responsibility and the work of the church, uh, it is only just on a few. And uh, uh, those, that few is already so overloaded with work. And if there's anything else that needs to be done, it's given to them as well. Is that a, in this church the same or in this country the same? You see, but that is the case. I believe we need to understand uh, that the work of Christ is uh, not finished in the earth. Redemption is finished and we thank God for that. The price for sin has been paid. Uh, but the work of the ministry of Jesus Christ here in the earth, uh, it needs to continue. Can you say amen? 
We like to focus, and all of us, we like to focus on the good old days. We like to focus on the past. You know, but you know, our God, He always puts more emphasis on the future. Can you say amen to that? Like your latter house, it shall be greater than the former. Like uh, I'll send you the former rain, but he says I will send you the latter rain also. He says I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. He says I will restore unto you all the years that the palmer worm and the, the caterpillar, uh, uh, these things have destroyed. He says I will restore that unto you. You see, you need to understand this morning that God is not finished with what He wants to do through you and what He wants to do through me. Can you say amen there? I'm busy in our country planting two churches, hopefully in this year uh, still. And as Pastor Rich was saying in the early service, what we are doing is we're putting up large tents. I was here, I think it was 2008, and there was a hurricane here or somewhere near here. Pastor Rich took me there and he took me specifically to a, a huge white structured tent that was there. For I went into the ministry, I worked uh, and as qualified as a boiler maker welder. And uh, I went in there and I took pictures, you know, of the framework there. And I went back home and I did my own structure, built a thousand seater tent. A friend of mine who's a tent maker and just wrapped it over there and we've been having crusades in there. We have been preaching the gospel. We have been casting out devils out of there. And we're doing the same thing, hopefully in this year, to plant two more churches. You see, what I'm saying to you this morning, uh, our God always saves the best for last. Can you say amen? Always does that. I remember when your pastor came and we dedicated the church building uh, uh, back there in Cape Town, South Africa. Seated about 2,000 people. I outgrew that building. And I came one day, I came to my leaders and I said to them, man, uh, is there any way that we can plant another church? And these were good men. There was nothing wrong with them. But they were fearful of that challenge. They didn't want to go into another building project. But what you need to understand, God, He will always challenge you. He will always want you to do something bigger or something greater. Hallelujah. Yet there is more to come. Can you say amen? God is not finished with you yet. Hallelujah. Our problem is we think the way the world thinks. At 65, I don't know, in this country we want to retire. But you go and search the scriptures this morning. There is no scripture in the Bible where it says at 62 or at 65 that you have to retire. There is no retirement with God. Can you say amen here this morning? And so most times what people do, they prepare for retirement and then they die. That's usually what happens to them. The Bible says Moses started at 80 years old. Took about 3 million murmuring believers, Christians, whatever you want to call them, through the desert but it was 80 years old when he started i like the story of caleb and joshua i mean caleb he was 85 years old and it reminds joshua after god had to wipe out an entire generation of unbelievers you know people that were murmuring and complaining god got them out of the way and finally it was time for them now to cross the jordan again and caleb looks at joshua and he says, Joshua, as my strength was then, so is my strength now. He says, give me that mountain. And I believe that is the way we need to look at ourselves. Hallelujah. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. I've discovered in my own life, a vision, friend, will keep you alive. Hallelujah. Vision will keep sickness off you. A vision, friend, will keep you healthy and it will keep you strong. I have a problem with people that's my age bracket that have stopped dreaming. It's very difficult for me to be uh, in their presence very long. People that feel they have done all, that they have seen all, and they know all. Yet, friend, there is still so much to know, and there's still, still so much to see, and there's still so much that needs to be done. Made a decision back home that I will not associate or go to any meetings where there are men of God uh, uh, that have given up on dreaming. I want to be around people that have a plan of action. Can you say amen? A plan of action for their nation. 
a plan of action for their city and a plan of action for their community. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. If you have hope, for, uh, if you have no hope, you don't need faith. Uh, and if you don't have faith, you don't need the word. Uh, and if you don't have the word, friend, you might just as well give up and die. You see, don't let the devil ever steal your hope. Don't let the devil ever take your hope. Uh, he might take your hair, but keep your hope. Amen. He might take your teeth, but keep your hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because our God is an active God. Uh, our God is a progressive God. Our God is an expressive God. Our God is an empowering God. Hallelujah. I believe the reason people are not hungry and thirsty for a move of God today or to be used of God is because you don't have to be empowered if you're not going anywhere. That's a fact. That's like a parked car. I mean, a parked car doesn't need any fuel, isn't it? It doesn't need fuel. God does not give His Holy Spirit for fun and games. God does not give His Holy Spirit so that you can be entertained. When God gives His Holy Spirit, it is always for active duty. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. It is for us to function effectively in the work of the ministry. The Bible says, He shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you'll be my witnesses both in Jerusalem, Judea, and in the uttermost parts of the world. It is when we decide that we're going to become witnesses that the Holy Ghost will come upon us. Jesus gets up in the synagogue after He just left uh, the wilderness temptation, the Bible says he heads straight into the synagogue. And as he walked into the synagogue, they handed him the scrolls. And he took out the scrolls and opened it there at Isaiah 61. Where it speaks about uh, the Messiah that would come. And the Bible says he reads out of there. It's found in Luke chapter 4, 16 to 21 as well. Where the Bible says he started reading to them. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You see, you need to understand this morning that the Spirit of the Lord only comes upon you when there is a cause. The Spirit of the Lord will only, or the anointing of God, will only come upon you if you're going somewhere with the things of God. The Spirit of God will only come upon you when you are doing something for God. You need to understand today that God anoints purpose. God anoints a cause. God anoints active service. And if you have no cause, you don't have a need of the anointing of God. Can I get an amen here this morning? And Jesus gives us the cause here in Luke uh, uh, chapter 4. He says to him, preach the gospel to the poor. Maybe you fit in there. He gives us the cause. He says to heal the brokenhearted. Maybe you fit in there. He says to preach deliverance to the captive, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, uh, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The question this morning is, he's given us the cause. Where do you fit in? Where do you fit in in the cause? Can we find you in the cause? If you're not going to report for active duty, you don't need the power of God. If you're not going to get involved in the work of the ministry, you don't need to be anointed of God. The power of God is for those that are involved in the cause. The anointing is there for those who have engaged in active duty. Hallelujah. Then Jesus said, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And he sat down. And I read that, I said, Lord, what do you mean by this? And the Lord is saying, you see, there's a group of people coming, hopefully, here in Florida, in this church this morning. 
That after I am gone and after I have gone to the Father on the right hand of the Father as your intercessor and your mediator, that you will be going out there and preaching the gospel to the poor and healing the brokenhearted, recovering of sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are blue, bruised. To even go and raise the dead and to cast out devils. There was a time back home, I remember way back in the 80s when I started in the ministry i started way earlier than that but we used to have crusades you know that lasted for three months every day every day we had services people would bring unsaved people they would get saved and get delivered and demons were cast out we had special groups those years in the church you know we trained i trained people to cast out devils and they would just if any demon manifests we just take you one side they'll take you one side and cast that devil out and come back again and so it went on and three months every night every night i had a tent up you know and and, and just preaching the gospel and people were getting saved. And then I had to scale it down to one month. Because the people got tired. Then I had to scale it down to two months. I had to scale it down to one, to, to three, three weeks and then to two weeks. Tonight at my church we're starting what is called three days of glory. Because people have become the pure is no longer active. Let me say to you this morning, what this nation needs uh, and my nation needs, uh, we need to get the pew back into active service again for God. Hallelujah! And that's going to change our nations. It's going to change our cities uh, and it's going to change our communities. I believe today with all of my heart what the church needs, what the pew needs, uh, it needs a fresh visitation uh, of the Holy Ghost. We need God's glory back in the church. Uh, we need God's people back into active service uh, for Almighty God and not just look at men that are apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists, but young and old in the church. We need to report for active service. I believe we have allowed being important. A lot of churches, and I travel all over in my country and God's blessed me to uh, preach in other countries as well but being important nowadays has been become a highlight to many young ministers coming up and being dignified has taken the place of active duty in my country you have young men today starting off the, in the ministry and all they're looking for is titles I don't know here titles that's what they want they want to be apostles here in the ministry want to be apostle or a bishop when I was growing up as a young man in the church, friend, uh, we never seeked, I can't remember my spiritual father, we never called him an apostle, we never called him an, a bishop, but we all knew that he functioned as an apostle. But nowadays, young men, they want these titles on their cards. And they want to make sure that you call them by those titles. In my country, young men are walking into conferences, I don't know. But you, uh, let, me, let me just say it this way. They pick up all of these things here from you in America because they watch your videos and your DVDs. And they come into our country, young men now walking into services, making their late entrances, uh, Sheila, coming into the service with bodyguards. Two bodyguards in the front, two on this side, two and two in the back. I said to one young man one day, I said, man, uh, tell me something. Who wants to kill you? Who wants to kill you? I said, my old president Nelson Mandela never even had eight and ten bodyguards. But this is the kind of madness that is taking place and it's taking the thrust of evangelism out of our churches because they want to be important. Instead of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. One young man came, came to me last year. He said to me, man, I so much I like what you're doing. And I so much I would like to work with you. Can you guarantee me a salary? I said, I can guarantee you heaven, yes. <laughs> Not a salary. <laughs> but you know, this is the kind of stuff that's happening. Nowadays, you know. Let me say to you this morning, friend. No matter who you are, up or down, no matter what your situation might be, without God we are all nothing. Without God we are useless. Without God we're all on our way to hell. 
It's a fact. I believe we need to put the flesh back on the cross. And everybody in the pew, in the pew, in, in all of those in the fivefold ministry, we need to get off our high horses. And we all need to report for active duty. You know, the church has become a club where everything is about us and nothing about God. I'm going to hit you and run this morning. Amen. I'll see you in five years' time. <laughs> <laughs> is there a way out here somewhere, Rich? <laughs> you know, everything is just about ourselves. I'm talking about my country. Maybe it's here the same, but I'm talking about my country. Everything just about ourselves and nothing about God. It's like things like this. I don't feel good. You have Christians like that? Yeah. I don't feel good. I, I, I don't like this. I won't go. I don't even care if the pastor comes and tells me, I won't go. It's not my job. Believers are no longer prepared to get involved in the program of their churches unless they know there is something in it for them. There's something in it for them. I'll help clean the church if there's something in it for me. I will help, yes, anytime in the children's ministry, but what's in it for me? I will assist in the music department, but what's in it for me? Almost said, I'll get married if I know what's in it for me. <laughs> and you know that kind of marriages never work. <laughs> you either kill each other, but you know, marriage that way doesn't work because both have to serve each other. Amen? And most sermons today that is preached is based upon benefits. And the benefits, like I said earlier on, is tremendous. And God wants you to enjoy those benefits as a believer. But nothing, nothing in most, you listen to TV evangelists and, 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 and men on TV, everything is just about yourself. How you can benefit, how you can prosper, how you can enjoy life. But nothing is said about the worker of the ministry. Churches are suffering today and pastors are suffering today because people are just interested in themselves. What's in it for me? What benefit is it for me? Communities are going to hell because we're occupied with the benefits of the gospel. Everything just around. Missionaries are dying, dying, literally dying. They're dying on the mission field because people in the pew, they want to hear messages. That is only focusing upon themselves. What's in it for me? And uh, nothing is happening where the gospel and the work of the ministry is concerned. Let me close this morning. I believe we need, all of us, we need to get back to active duty. Can I get an amen here? We need to get back to active duty. The work of the ministry. You know the reason the early church grew the way it did? And the Bible says, and the one, one of, in the book of Acts it says, they came one time and they said, where are those that have turned the world upside down? How was that possible? You know how it was possible? Because the pew was involved. It wasn't just those in the, in the fivefold ministry. The pew was involved. Young and old, they reported for active duty. And they went and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says they went from house to house. Let me ask you a question this morning. I am thinking back of my church at home too. People the same all over I've discovered. What if the pastor makes an appeal to you this morning and say, man, we'd like to use your house as a place of prayer. Would you make your house available? You would? Most places in the world today, they don't want that anymore. But you know, I've discovered maybe if you make your house available, maybe the devil will leave. <laughs> maybe God will pay off your house supernaturally. But you're holding on to stuff that you will have to walk away from one of these days. All have to go the road of death. God is challenging us here this morning. It is the pew. If we're going to change our nations, if we're going to change our cities and communities, we cannot just look to those in the fivefold. 
all of us here this morning, young and old, young and old, we have to report for active duty. If you my age here this morning, my age bracket, you want to live a little bit longer, can I help you? Get a vision. God will keep sickness off you. God will keep you healthy. God will give you strong. I'm pushing towards 70 now already. I don't want to say what the richest age is, but I'm pushing towards 70. I got no sugar diabetes. I got no high blood. I got no low blood. I got no arthritis. You know why? Vision. Vision. You got a vision. God will keep you alive until that vision is fulfilled. Moses came to the Lord. He said, Lord, I don't know what came. We pastors feel like this sometimes. What came over me that I accepted to take care of people? Can't I just have worked with cars? Cars don't answer us back. You know, I'm trained as a qualified boiler maker, welder, work with steel, build boats and stuff like that. Never had problems with that. Just go to work, do my work, go home, get my paycheck, and there I go. Moses came, he said, Lord, I don't know. This thing has become too hard for me. You've given me these people, all these people know is about complaining and murmuring and what's in it for me? And, uh, are you going to promote me? And, you know, you know what church is like? He said, this thing has become too hard for me. The Lord says to him, Moses, choose 70 men from the 12 tribes of Israel. He chose 70 men. And I would have thought, I said, Lord, wouldn't you take of your spirit and put it upon them? The Lord says, Moses, I'm going to take of your spirit and put it upon the 70. And I thought about that. That's exactly what God wants to do in the church today. He wants to take of His Spirit that is already placed upon your pastor and upon the pastor's wife and those of us that are in the fivefold ministry. And God desires in this crucial hour that we are living in. He's making, you know, I don't know if you're feeling it, but there's a shift coming. There's a shift that is coming. The whole focus, mark my words, is going to come off those that are in the fivefold. Those that are on the televisions and all of that. And as God's going to put His Spirit upon the church, upon the pew, and you're going to go out there and lay hands on the sick. That's the way the early church was, actually, in fact, in the beginning. You're going to be going out there and casting out devils. You say, uh, Pastor Edson, but what if I lay hands uh, upon this person and this person don't get healed? What if the person do get healed? You ever thought about that yet? What if the person is demon possessed and the demon don't want to come out? Have you ever thought, what if that demon comes out? Even mentioned your name. <laughs> That's a good feeling, isn't it? But God wants to shift His power. That's what God is saying in this day and in this hour. He wants to shift it upon the pew. And if you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, back home I'll say, Pastor, I want God to put His Spirit upon me. Because I realize that my nation, my community, my city, depends upon me. I'm willing to report this morning for active service and active duty. I want you to stand to your feet. You have a great church here. With a great past, I was thinking about him. And I said to myself, if God must, must probably tell your pastor <laughs> and release him and says, uh, Rich, I want you to go to hell and get all those wayward sinners all saved. He must probably take you to hell too. <laughs> to go and preach to those sinners there. Mission minded. Great church. With a focus like in most churches. is just upon the church. 
but it's nothing out there. But I believe God is changing and there's a shift coming. God's going to use us and the pew especially in a mighty way. You'll come in here on a Sunday. The pastor will come and equip you. You'll go out there and do the work of the ministry. That's what God's plan was way in the beginning with the early church. They went out. The apostles, they all stayed in Jerusalem. I said to Pastor, it looks to me all the apostles were hiding. Some of them were hiding because, I mean, they were after them. They wanted to kill them. If they weren't hiding, they would have been killed much earlier. They had a good place to hide. The church went out there and preached the gospel. Many people got saved. Many people got stirred. Many people accepted the Lord as personal Savior. I want you just to lift your hands this morning. And I'm going to pray for you. Father, this morning, we stand in your awesome presence, O oh God. Lord, our nations and our cities and our communities go into a Christless eternity swiftly, Lord. Father, as we stand in your presence, we humble ourselves before you, Lord, as the word says in Second Chronicles, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Lord, forgive us of our slothfulness. Forgive us, O oh God, for not engaging, O oh God, in the work of the ministry. But because we've heard this word this morning, Make ourselves available. We pray, O oh God, let your spirit, let your power, let your anointing come upon each and every one in this house this morning, young and old, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, saturate us with your power. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Touch us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Lord, just use us for your glory in the name of Jesus. Let's just worship the Lord for a while. Let's just praise Him this morning. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, bless your name. Bless your name, bless your name. For behold, I say unto you this morning, my church, that the plans that I have for you is great, but you will have to report for active service and duty, saith the Lord of hosts. For a long time I've desired to pour out my spirit upon you and in you, so that I can flow through you and work through you. Because out there are many that are seeking me and searching for me and that are on the verge of committing suicide and dying in hospitals and prisons. And I have no hands and I have no feet and I have no eyes and I have no mouth to go and speak to them and to share with them. I'm calling upon you today, saith God, to do the work of the ministry. And if you volunteer, God says, I will use you mightily. And I will keep you strong and I will keep you healthy. That you will fulfill the purpose that I have designed for your life. Say it, the Lord of hosts. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just uh, sense the Holy Spirit special way here today. Uh, I, I just I, I'd like.
Pastor Eddie, if he would, just to uh, pray for a few people that God would just touch them and heal them and minister to them. And we want to pray, uh, especially for Bill Jackson this morning. He was in the early service and he's looking at some very serious surgery on his leg. We want to continue to pray for Paul Powers that the Lord would touch him and heal his body and minister to his need. Eddie, if you would, um, David, if it's okay. just uh, feel like the Lord wants to uh, Father, in the name of heal his Jesus, church and empower us upon your servant. God, raise us up him this morning to minister the crown of his head to the soles of his feet take authority this morning over every sickness every disease command it to go in Jesus name Lord you brought deliverance to the captives heal the broken hearted this morning in the name of Jesus Sotaya Rekoborala Sande Yutoria Saturala Kushanda Thank you Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Thank you Lord from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet Jesus name We want to remember to pray for the Decanio family lost their mother this week and now rich we want to lift them up as we close in prayer today. And if you just lay your hands on Lisa here, she lost her husband um, a few days ago. Just if you could just pray for her, you know, Lisa, right here. Right here. Just pray that the Lord would touch her. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on Lisa. Lord, the pain of grieving this morning, Father. You are the Paracletos, the Comforter. One who comes alongside of us, Lord, I pray that you'd heal this wound speedily in Jesus' name. Touch, oh God, any confusion, any problems, Lord, in your family or wherever, Lord. I pray, oh God, that you would just restore and you would make whole and use Romans 8.28. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God according to his purpose God just intervene in this situation in the mighty name of Jesus and I give you thanks thank Father you. in thank Jesus name. thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord name. we want to pray for everybody that's going to be involved in sports camp if that you just raise your hand we're just going to pray Eddie just pray that God would bless them and and all of those that are going to Mexico if you could just pray for There'll be missionaries here this week, but there'll be missionaries in Mexico. Just pray that the Lord would just touch us in a special way. Father, you know this morning all that will be involved in this camp, Lord, and those that are going to Mexico, Father, I pray. As we have prayed already, Lord, your Spirit come upon them mightily, Lord. Let the gifts of the Holy Ghost flow through them freely, severally as you will, Lord. Word of wisdom, knowledge, discerning of spirit, oh God. Faith, oh, healings and everything, Lord, that will, they will need as they do the work of the ministry. Give them a word, Father, wherever they go. In the mighty name of Jesus, let them come back, Lord. Even as disciples came back and said, yes, even demons are subject to the name of Jesus. The sick were healed, the captives were set free. Lord, let the church once again become the church. Oh, Rokura Kasataya Labasandaralabande. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, Uriesa. Just receive what the Lord has for you today. Just a just a special flow of the Holy Spirit here in the church today. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Amen.